Every year, hundreds of millions of tons of plastic are synthesized to make the products that people use on a daily basis, and every day, millions of tons of these plastics are disposed of as waste. This plastic waste can remain in landfills or the environment for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and as the plastic piles up, it causes severe environmental damage, as its slow breakdown produces toxic byproducts. Recycling most of these plastics is difficult, as plastic loses quality quickly with conventional recycling methods, and more than 90% of plastic produced worldwide is not recycled, reaching the end of its life in as little as a year. Bacteria offer a novel and potentially much better way to recycle plastics, as bacteria that break down plastics could be grown very easily and rely primarily on the plastic they break down for food. Developments in the last decade could result in a drastic reduction in plastic pollution across the world, greatly benefiting the planet. There are several varieties of plastic that are used in common applications, such as food and beverage packaging, household appliances, medical and industrial devices, and others. Plastics consist of polymers, long chains of monomer units linked together by covalent bonds. Polymers such as polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyls, and polyurethanes are among the most commonly found polymers in plastics. Polymers are generally combined with materials known as plasticizers that promote greater flexibility. These small molecules function by integrating themselves between polymer molecules and disrupting interactions between the polymer chains. After polymerization, in which monomers are assembled into high molecular weight polymer chains, most polymers also undergo a thermal or chemical treatment to modify their properties to suit specific applications, such as cross-linking or curing polymers to make them mechanically stronger. The multitude of polymers, synthesis methods, and treatments used to make modern plastic products is a large part of why it is so difficult, if not impossible, to recycle plastic. Many polymers are thermosetting, meaning they cannot be melted down if they have already been cured. Even if a polymer is not thermosetting, it can be extremely arduous to recycle, as breaking it down chemically and reusing it would require a multi-step process. In addition, polymers can only be reused a few times before they become chemically and physically too weak to use from the treatment processes they go through. To fully reuse polymers, they must be broken down into their constituent monomers, a tricky process as the covalent bonds that link these polymers are often too strong to break without the use of combustion or strong chemicals. Combustion and strong chemicals introduce a new issue, toxins and biologically active molecules that are produced as a result and end up in the environment. This host of issues makes it very difficult to efficiently recycle the vast majority of plastics. In the six or so decades since plastics were introduced to the market, human activity has produced more than 8 billion metric tons of plastic, most of which has ended up in landfills or in the oceans. Our production of plastics is ever-increasing, fueled by an expanding market for commodities and services that require plastic. The plastic that finds its way out of landfills and into the environment also degrades, albeit slowly. However, its environmental impacts are immense and not completely understood. Animals can be directly harmed by plastic waste when they consume it, become trapped in it, or injure themselves on it. Degradation of plastic is a potentially bigger issue, as many plastics can release toxic or bioactive small molecules when they degrade. Exposure to ultraviolet light can create reactive molecules in the plastics, breaking them down into compounds that mimic plant and animal hormones and thus have detrimental effects on living organisms. The evolutionary processes that have shaped life on this planet strive for survival in the face of hardship, and plastic pollution is certainly a strong driving force for living organisms to develop a method to deal with this danger. Naturally, it makes sense that some organisms would find a way to process molecules found in plastic waste into less harmful molecules and perhaps even use those molecules as a food source. 
Bacteria are promising subjects to have developed such a mechanism, as they are found nearly everywhere on Earth, have an incredible genetic diversity, and can use a variety of molecules as food sources. Due to the short lives of most bacteria, a mutation that offers beneficial protection against an outside force could proliferate much faster than in an organism such as a mammal or a flowering plant. Bacteria can also share genetic information between each other, which facilitates evolution of certain mechanisms, such as those that could potentially be responsible for plastic-eating bacteria. As plastics become more widespread in the environment, bacteria that consume those plastics would follow. Bacteria that could at least partially digest common plastics have been observed since the 2000s, but in 2016, a team of researchers in Japan discovered bacteria that could digest the polymer polyethylene terephthalate much faster than previously identified bacteria. The bacteria, collected from polyethylene terephthalate contaminated sediment near a facility that processes the plastic, appears to have evolved an enzyme specifically to hydrolyze the ester bonds found in PET. Once hydrolyzed, the resulting molecules are broken down further and used as a source of carbon for the bacteria. Although the enzyme has significant limits, bioengineering of the enzyme and enzymes in associated bacteria could allow for the faster digestion of more forms of PET, and the recovery and use of product molecules in remaking the PET in a cleaner manner than existing methods. In 2020, a team of researchers in Germany discovered that a soil bacterium was able to live on a polyurethane film, a material that is typically highly toxic for most bacteria, as well as other organisms. The bacteria was able to not only survive on the film, but use the products of its degradation for its sole source of energy, carbon, and nitrogen. Genetic analysis of the bacteria indicates that the several enzymes evolved by the bacteria could be able to digest aromatic compounds, meaning those with double-bonded ring structures. This development could help aid in safe, large-scale digestion of polyurethanes, as well as other polymers that contain aromatic rings in their structures. Since the discovery of the enzymes that digest these polymers, many research groups have investigated their structure and the mechanisms by which they hydrolyze the polymers. Scientists have also attempted to engineer enzymes found in bacteria that digest plastics, and some of these attempts have been very successful. A team of researchers from the UK has developed a combination enzyme by linking together two enzymes from the bacterial species able to digest PET one enzyme which hydrolyzes PET, and another which speeds up the breakdown of resultant molecules. Such an approach is not uncommon in nature, and the team has seen a significant increase in the speed with which the combination enzyme is able to digest PET. Further advancements could allow such enzymes to digest significant quantities of plastic quickly enough for industrial application. While the digestion of PET or polyurethane by bacteria is a step in the right direction, plastic recycling by bacteria still has a ways to develop before practical application. The bonds in PET or polyurethane are relatively easier to break than those in polyethylene or polystyrene, and few bacteria have been observed to even slowly attempt to hydrolyze those bonds. Some research is focused on non-bacterial organisms, such as fungi or worms, digesting plastics, and promising progress has been made. However, fungi and worms are much less practical for application than bacteria due to their longer lifespans and larger sizes. In addition to the challenges posed by finding organisms that can digest polymers, scientists know little about the long-term effects of such enzymes and the molecular byproducts that they can produce. Depending on the specificity of the enzymes, they could potentially target molecules in living organisms and kill them. The byproducts of polymer degradation, if not carefully controlled, could also harm living organisms on land or in the ocean. The formation of microplastics, small pieces of plastic that float in water and often harbor bacteria, is also a large issue, as it could deliver harmful bacteria or chemicals to fragile ecosystems. 
Even if biological methods were developed, they would have to be more cost-effective than simply synthesizing fresh polymers, which would not be feasible for at least another decade. Plastic pollution is one of the defining issues of the 21st century, an issue that threatens the already stressed ecosystems of the planet, and one that is only getting worse. In response to the billions of tons of plastic waste in the environment, living organisms have begun to break down this waste into a food source, and this may hold the key to reducing the buildup of plastic and perhaps to efficiently reusing plastic many times. Modern research, however, is still only at the beginning stages of tackling this issue, and by the time these solutions are implemented, it may be too late. The most important measure to stop plastic pollution is not to develop methods to deal with it after the fact, but to stop it at the source by reducing your dependence on plastic in everyday life. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, check out more videos on the channel for other interesting topics, or subscribe to the channel for more educational documentaries.